What's up, everybody? This is Alex Christopher from The Durant, and I have with me Alexander Mercurius, Editor-in-Chief of The Durant, and today we're going to be talking about Novichok 2.0. So, Alexander, you're in uh, the UK right now, you're in London, and um, two storylines are going on, two very important storylines are going on. The first one is, is great news for the people of the UK, and that is that England is into the semifinals and, uh, in Russia, playing in Russia, and they're moving to the semifinals. They were playing against Croatia, so everyone must be ecstatic, everyone must be happy about this news. The second news that came out is that we had another Novichok incident. And we'll remember the first one dealt with uh, Sergei and Yulia Skripal and uh, the fact that supposedly Russia was targeting them in some sort of, you know, revenge, get the spy revenge scheme cooked up by Vladimir Putin. Give us the backstory on the Skripals, Alexander, and bring us up to date with the ridiculous nature of the story being pushed out right now with this latest Novichok attack. Well, first of all, can I, can I say that people are indeed delighted here in Britain at how uh, well the England team is doing in the World Cup. It was completely unexpected. Um, I suspect there are uh, one group of people who are not so delighted, and that is the authorities, <laughs> some of the authorities in, in uh, Britain who were wanting England to boycott the World Cup because it was in Russia. There is a bizarre editorial in the Daily Telegraph which seems to say that we should still not be in Russia for the World Cup. I cannot imagine that is a popular view with most people. And horror of horrors, uh, it has turned out that Russia is not this uh, uh, primitive, horrible, dark, uh, uh, um, uh, violent place that the British people had been told it was, but is actually a very attractive, very, very friendly, uh, uh, very prosperous, very orderly, very law-abiding place. Uh, uh, so already we see the British propaganda image of Russia has taken a huge dent. Now, let's get on to the script pals. I mean, to me, this whole story about the script pals right from the start has never made a great deal of sense. Uh, it, it's all about this man, Sergei Skripal, who was a former Russian uh, spy. Uh, uh, the British recruited him in the early 1990s. Um, the Russians, uh, a f four years later, found out about what he was doing. He was convicted, sent to prison in Russia, spent four years in prison in Russia. Then a decision was made that uh, he would be swapped with some British agents and where, uh, other agents in, uh, uh, other Russian agents, sorry, who had been found in the West. Uh, um, so the Russians pardoned him and let him go. Now, um, uh, supposedly, years later, after he ceased to be of any conceivable uh, interest or threat to anybody, after whatever damage he did, it was, you know, far away in the past, Vladimir Putin, who uh, um, has lots of other important things to do, decided that he was going to send uh, uh, his team of killers all the way to England and that they would murder this poor man <laughs> with uh, uh, um, this mysterious substance called Novichok. And uh, uh, this is what the British government is saying. Now, I mean, that has never made any, very, any, any kind of sense to me. I mean, you know, one can come up with all sorts of plausible or implausible theories about what happened in Salisbury in March. That, frankly, seems to me a most implausible one. I mean, it just doesn't add up. And I think a lot of people who are uh, familiar both with Russia and, and the intelligence game, uh, uh, they too see that it just doesn't add up. And, of course, what was supposed to be the clinching evidence, which was that this substance uh, uh, that was supposed to have been used to poison uh, Sergei Skripal and which inadvertently also poisoned his daughter, Yulia Skripal, who it turns out wants to come back to Russia. This is the country that's supposed to have wanted to kill her, but apparently she's very keen to get home and she's been tele telephoning her cousin who is in Russia telling her as much. Anyway, this substance, which is supposed to have been only made in Russia, it turns out isn't in fact only made in Russia. The secret of it exists in all sorts of places. Um, its uh, formula has been published and it can be made out of commercial uh, materials. So, I mean, you know, I, I don't think there's ever been any real evidence 
pointing to Russia in the Skripal case. The only evidence, to my mind, is that the people were Russians. I mean, you know, the Sergei and Yulia Skripal are Russians. And now, of course, what's happened is that many months later, uh, uh, two more people have been affected um, I I near Salisbury right. by this uh, 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 apparently same or similar chemical. And it turns out the problem is that on this occasion, they are not Russians. They are actually British. So uh, the British are having to come up with a whole new set of theories to try <laughs> and explain how that uh, is possible and how that makes sense with you know, their original theory of Russian involvement in the original uh, uh, attack. So you have one, uh, 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 one theory, one, one I think not very, Im very, not one, one very implausible theory, and another theory has now been based upon it, which is that you know, they came across this uh, substance left over from the previous attack by accident. Now, I think it's quite clear what they should do. Uh, there's been articles about this now for the first time I I in the British media. I mean, there's a very interesting article by uh, a commentator called Simon Jenkins who writes at The Guardian. But it's things that we have been saying on the Duran from the outset. The, the politicians need to leave this alone. They need to leave it to the police to get it on top of this, find out what something of what actually happened because we don't actually know very much about what happened identify a suspect an actual suspect which the police have not yet done and then then once we have that kind of information we can start to theorize but of course that's not what the british have done and i think after this last episode this 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 incident where these two british people have been uh, uh, poisoned they're starting to look extremely foolish. <laughs> well, let me read you a statement from the House of Commons on the 5th of July from uh, the British Home Secretary, uh, Sajid Javid. And he said the following after this, this attack, this latest attack. I don't even want to call it an attack. No one knows what the hell it is. <laughs> um, this is what he said. This is in the House of Commons. The use of chemical weapons anywhere is barbaric and inhumane. The decision taken by the Russian government to deploy these in Salisbury on March 4th was reckless and callous. There is no plausible alternative explanation to the events in March other than the Russian state was responsible. The eyes of the world are on Russia, not least because of the World Cup. It is now time the Russian state comes forward and explains exactly what has gone on. Question number one, where's Boris Johnson in the second attack? Did they just say, look, Boris, you, you, you really gaffed the first one up, take a back seat? Who's this Sajid uh, Javid? Why are they pu pushing him to the forefront? And why is he making such claims in the House of Commons when you rightly said, no one knows what the hell's going on? Aren't people in the, in the English government, the British government, aren't they telling, advising, consulting May, don't do anything, don't make any kind of statements like this because we messed up the mm. first uh, Novichok false flag so badly. Mm. Let's, let's hold off on making such statements. Mm. Well, I, I think you're absolutely right to point out that nothing has been said this time by Boris Johnson, who was all over the place uh, and, and said all sorts of things which in the end proved highly embarrassing to the British position, uh, including things like the fact that the Novichok that was used to poison uh, the Skripals was made in Russia when it turned out it was, you know, there's no evidence that it was. Right. So uh, they've obviously parked Boris Johnson. They've told him, for, for heaven's sake, keep your mouth shut. It's important <laughs> to say Theresa May is also keeping her mouth shut. I mean, she's also not talking about no. this. And you're quite right to single out Javid. Now, the point about Javid is he is the Home Secretary. So he is supposedly the official in charge of the police. Now, he is the man who came, uh, who was appointed Home Secretary quite recently and who some people are talking about as a possible future prime minister uh, and conservative party leader. Now, in a sense, it makes more sense for him to be speaking to the House of Commons than it ever made any sense for either Boris Johnson or Theresa May to be speaking to the House of Commons about what was a police matter. But I would make one important point about that, which is that, of course, his predecessor, Amber Rudd, who was actually the Home Secretary at the time of the original Salisbury incident, made a particular point of saying almost nothing. 
And I think the reason she did that is because, by all accounts, she was a very capable and efficient minister, and she knew that it is completely inappropriate for ministers to stand up in the House of Commons and talk in this way. So why did Javid talk in this way? Well, I think the short answer is it comes back to the problem the British made for themselves when, back in March, they pointed the finger at Russia. Because they pointed the finger at Russia in March, they have to, in order to maintain consistency and some kind of logic, continue to point the finger at Russia now, even though there is no real evidence uh, pointing to Russia, either in relation to the events which happened in March or to the events which have happened now. And it, it's very interesting that uh, Javid says that all the eyes are, 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 are fixed on Russia. I suspect the truth is that such eyes as there are are now probably fixed on Britain with an awful lot of people saying around the world, well, you know, what were the British talking about in March? And were we uh, uh, told the full truth in March? And it is interesting that all sorts of countries that rushed to support Britain in March are not doing so now. Uh, there is no suggestion of any kind of sanctions being uh, uh, imposed on Russia now as they were in March. And Javid has just issued a further statement admitting that this time there won't be any sanctions on Russia. So, uh, one way or another, the British have made themselves a complete and utter mess. Okay, so, Alexander, if you had to take a stab as to what's really going on in this latest Novichok uh, uh, incident, this latest Novichok uh, contamination attack, whatever, we've gone over this, whatever you, you call it, what do you think is really at play here? I mean, we've heard, we're hearing some conspiracy theories that they're doing it for the World Cup, sabotage the World Cup. We're hearing that they're doing it to sabotage the Trump-Putin meeting in Helsinki. Um, we, we know that these, these two people um, attacked our, I believe they were heroin addicts, recovering heroin addicts. Um, one of them, I, I think, was homeless. Um, correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, what do you think is really going on here? Were these people, you know, contaminated with Novichok? Is this something else? Is this really about sabotaging the World Cup or the Trump-Putin meeting? Or is this just a, a Theresa May government that just doesn't have any clue as to, you know, how to handle itself? Uh, I, well, I think, I think the last point is absolutely a spot on. I think, I think this government <laughs> doesn't know how to handle it. And um, I, I have to say that I, I, I find it very difficult, actually, to theorise about this one because I don't think we've got enough information. The, the one point I'm going to make uh, and is that both of these incidents, both the original Skripal incident and this incident with these, these two her, uh, her addicts, these two people who are indeed heroin addicts, is that when the emergency services first saw them, um, they, they did think that, you know, this was something that they had ingested themselves, this substance was something that they'd ingested themselves, and that um, it, was, it was a case of uh, a drug, uh, um, uh, a drug take, uh, uh, ab abuse incident, which right. had gone in both cases, both the script out case and this one, that it had gone wrong. And frankly, the only thing that makes me uh, uh, question that, actually, is this, this whole thing about a Novichok. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm actually starting to wonder whether, in fact, we are talking about an actual Novichok here. Because I, right. I get to just say, uh, you know, a, a, a sort of chemical weapon here. Because um, the other thing about this particular substance, this, this Novichok that we're hearing so much about, is that it changes all the time. Um, <laughs> it, 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 I mean, you know, at one moment, it we're told that it's absolutely deadly. If you come into contact with it, uh, uh, you, will, you will be killed instantaneously, and that it's 10 times or 20 times more dangerous yeah. than VX. Then the next thing you hear is that um, actually it's not so dangerous after all. People can survive it, and we can find <laughs> all kinds of drugs to treat it. Then you hear that it deteriorates very quickly, it, 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 which is why supposedly there was little harm to the Skripals uh, when they came into contact with it. Uh, now, three months later, we are told that it's incredibly persistent. Yeah. Uh, 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 and so it's very dangerous to come into contact with it at any time. 
uh, uh, at the same time, we're told, well, actually, we shouldn't be too worried because, you know, even if there is some of this stuff lying around, uh, um, uh, you know, it's in such small quantities that it isn't really dangerous at all. So, I mean, we're told so much, so much about this Norvichok uh, substance that doesn't really add up or make a great deal of sense that I, I, I'm beginning to have doubts about this whole thing, about whether, in <laughs> fact, anything actually has really happened. Uh, I mean, bear something in, in mind. I mean, Yulia Skripal, who is the one person amongst all of these, this group who's actually made some public statements. I mean, those public statements which she has made have been incredibly elliptical. And she expressed astonishment in them that there had been any sort of attack upon her. And she has said repeatedly that she wants to go back to Russia. Now, uh, that, again, that just doesn't really make sense with this theory that we are actually looking at some sort of substance uh, uh, and that there is some sort of actual attack here. So I, I, I'm, I'm start, I mean, you know, this, this, this may be wrong. I, I'm not saying this is true, but I'm wondering whether indeed we've really understood very well what this Novichok stuff actually is and whether uh, there isn't some misunderstanding and whether perhaps uh, uh, this is some case, some sort of case of people experimenting with something and that experiment going horribly wrong. I'm going to say three things, Alexander. I want you just to elaborate on them and, and maybe see if there's some connection. You know, that maybe we can connect some dots now that we're discussing it as we're closing out this, this conversation. The first one is that Novichok was, um, was, was this buzzword that was thrown in. I myself can, can, can make this, uh, this proposition. These, these people got poisoned. These two sets of people got poisoned. And perhaps the UK government saw an opportunity to, to, to create some uh, Russophobia hysteria. That's the, first, that's the first point I want to make. You can elaborate on that. The second point is they have poured in down, which is the chemical lab, you know, just miles away that, that supposedly has Novichok or has a lot of chemicals in stock. They, they test chemicals, they manufacture chemicals. Um, so they're, they're, in this, they're in the vicinity of both attacks, the first one and the second one. And then the third one is that the scribbles have just disappeared. <laughs> they vanished. So you have these three things. Elaborate on, on all three of these. One, and see, is there some dots that we could connect? Is, is this, like you said, is this just completely made up, completely a, a, a fictionist tale? Right. Well, first of all, I mean, I, I, I'm glad you've pointed all three, all three of these things out, and, uh, and especially the fact that the Skripals have essentially disappeared. I mean, we just don't hear from them. Uh, um, Yulia Skripal has issued these very strange uh, statements, which are clearly very controlled, and that, to my mind, show that that she is not being allowed to speak out openly to the media, to the public, to say what her actual experience was. And that's very disturbing, and it does suggest that some people in London are, are, are very uncomfortable about what happened. Now, Talking about the Russophobia and the whipping up of Russophobia, uh, Yulia, Sergei and Yulia Skripal were found on this bench in Salisbury. Within hours, that story had become news. I mean, mm. it, was, it was in all the newspapers in Britain. That is extraordinary. I can tell you, living in Britain, you find people passed out on benches <laughs> uh, uh, quite often. What was so remarkable about these two that, that made it a story before even their identities or their mm. nationalities became public? Uh, I mean, that was very remarkable. Then within days of them being uh, 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 um, um, found in that way, we were told that they'd been poisoned by this mysterious, extraordinary chemical, Novichok, and the British government was pointing fingers at Russia before the investigation, before the criminal investigation carried out by the police was properly speaking underway. Now, looking at these facts, it is impossible for me to see in them anything else other than an orchestrated campaign by someone. And quite clearly, that campaign was targeted at Russia. 
Now, that, that is a separate issue about what actually happened in, in Salisbury and what has now happened a, a little further away in Amesbury. But clearly, somebody decided very quickly that they were going to point the finger at, these, uh, at Russia in connection with these incidents. So when you talk about somebody in Britain using this as a campaign to go against Russia, I personally have no doubt about it. Now, uh, coming to Porton Down, it is remarkable. It is very interesting, actually, <laughs> that uh, um, um, uh, if you look at these, these two incidents, the one in Salisbury and the one in Amesbury, well, uh, Porton Down is between these two places. <laughs> and and I, I, I think it's Craig Murray who says, you know, why do we have to talk about mysterious chemical laboratories all the way off in Russia, you know, halfway around the world, when, you know, within miles, eight, eight miles, I think it is in one yeah. case, of, of, of both of these incidents, you have this big British laboratory, which has all of these <laughs> chemical weapons. I mean, surely it, there's a connection to the one. Oh my God. There's an even more obvious connection to the other. So, I mean, I, I, I don't want to speculate about this. The people in Porton Down are adamant that there is no possibility of a leak from, the, from their uh, facilities. I mean, I, I, I don't want to question that. I mean, I don't have enough knowledge to question that. But you know, look at look at the map, uh, and and I mean, you you can ask you can ask that question, and it seems to me you you would be you would have far more grounds for asking that question. You know, what possible role does Port and Down have than all these other fantastic things you've been hearing? You know about Putin sitting down and you know having a list and saying, you know, who, you know, this ghastly man, Sergei Skripal, he did all these evil things before I even became president. Let's kill him. Let's get this <laughs> mysterious substance out. I mean, you know, let's send all these people to England uh, and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do something to the British just before we have our World Cup for some crazy reason. I mean, you know, I mean, that seems to me far more fantastic that any suggestion that Porton Down might have had a role in this. I'm not saying Porton Down did have a role in this. All I'm saying is that I can understand why people might, looking at the map, might think that it did. So, I mean, there are all these dots. I don't think we yet have enough information to join them all up. But right. the single most important thing, the thing that really makes this, in my opinion, so sinister, is that Sergei and Yulia Skripal are not talking publicly. They're not able to communicate what happened to them to the public. And, and that must beg so many questions that it's a shame, it's, it's awful that nobody in Britain and the mainstream media appears to be asking them. It sounds to me, I mean, listening to you and going over the facts, it sounds to me that this is just a, a, a false flag back in the in the Scripple case was a false flag that's just turned so wrong for the for the British government in, in that they, they they had the whole scenario set up the whole spying thing of Novichok uh, these Russian agents they had everything ready and played out and I agree with you it sounds fantastic to think that they're going to bring this chemical all the way from Russia when it's sitting a couple of miles away and it's going to be the Russians that are flying it into the UK and now it seems like four months later, this chemical or whatever it is, Novichok or something else, from Porton Down or wherever they found it from, is kind of slipped up somewhere and it ended up somewhere on the street or somewhere in a dumpster or somewhere in a syringe. And it infected these, these two former heroin addicts. And the, one of your points is really interesting because on the Scripple stuff, they, they had it, they were reporting on it hours after they found them on the bench. These guys, uh, Rowley and Sturgis, from what I understand, it took days to, mm. to get the news out, which means, that so, you know, they were, they were kind of like, I think the main government was scratching their heads saying, you know, oh crap, you know, th th this chemical, you know, <laughs> this Novichok thing again, now what do we do? I, I, I think you've hit on it, actually. I, I think the British are extremely embarrassed. I, I think they are feeling now that, I, I, in, a, in a sense, the chickens are coming home to roost because they rushed <laughs> off to make this attribution in March, long before there were any facts 
to base it upon. And now, they've, now an incident has happened uh, uh, not far away in Amesbury, which is I frankly inconsistent with their original claim. So you're absolutely right. They clearly did sit on it for several days trying to work out what they were going to say. Uh, and, and what they said, frankly, isn't very convincing, and I don't think it's convinced many people. Um, as I said, I, I, I think that the one thing we can say with confidence about this affair is that the British government has handled it disastrously. And if they were trying to discredit the Russians, the people they're discrediting in the end are themselves. Hmm. And I think the Russians are, 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 are looking at this with um, astonishment. Uh, and I think the uh, other people around the world, uh, many of those people who, who um, initially fell for the British story, are probably be starting to get rather angry because they must feel that they no longer have any control over what's happening in, in, in Britain and that this is all good, this is all good, this whole story is all going horribly wrong. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, in closing, Alexander, you're in, you're in London and you're in the, mm. the UK. Do, do, going, going back to the World Cup, how we opened up this discussion mm. and, and the excitement around the World Cup and, and how England is playing, do you, do, does the average citizen, does the average person in London, in, in England, the UK, do they even really care about this Novichok 2.0 now, given the positive news of what's happening in Russia with regards to the World Cup? Do they really care or is this, this is just a big failed attempt and the timing is very, very poorly done for this? I, I think they cared in March. I, I mean, it was such a big story. It was so heavily promoted in March. Um, I, I, I mean, it, it, you know, Britain is the country which loves spy films and spy stories. I mean, you know, James Bond is a British person. So, I mean, it, it all played very well into all of that. So I think a lot of people in Britain uh, basically accepted the sort of government story in, in March. Not everybody, but uh, I think most people did. And, and I think it was a big story then. I think this latest incident is just, I, I mean, it's so bizarre that, as I said, it's, it's failing to register. I, do, I, I don't think they care, but I do think that an awful lot of people now uh, um, are becoming more questioning of what they're being told about Russia because the experience of the British team and of British fans who went to Russia is so different from what they were led to believe. And um, you're hearing more and more stories about British fans uh, England fans who didn't go to Russia because they were deterred from doing so by things the British media and the British government was saying and they're now angry they didn't go and some of them are in fact trying to go because they want to be in this country where which is having such a tremendous carnival such a tremendous fun in order to support their team and I think that is a far bigger matter now for most people in Britain than as I said what happened to two heroin addicts in Amesbury. That's yeah. the truth of it. <laughs> very well put, very well put. Alexander Redkirst, Editor-in-Chief of the Durant. Thank you very much for an, an interesting uh, conversation on what has truly become a bizarre, a bizarre uh, news story, uh, the Novichok 2.0 um, incident in Amesbury. Alexander Rickers, Editor-in-Chief of The Durant. Thank you very much. Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below. Go to The Durant Shop, pick up a t-shirt, help support The Durant. Alexander Rickers, Editor-in-Chief of The Durant. Thank you very much. Until next time, guys, take care.